This is Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger from their 2017 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. This is when they started buying Apple stock and the, they will cover some of the reasoning of why they did it. And this video is meant to serve as kind of like a refresher course to remind myself and others of what they look for in their investments. And this video can be replayed every once in a while to refresh that. After the footage from the shareholder meeting, I will have some analysis on C's Candy and Apple stock, so stay tuned for that as well. In your career of thousands of negotiations and business dealings, could you describe for the crowd which one sticks out in your mind as your favorite or as otherwise noteworthy? Well, I don't think I've got a favorite, but the one that probably did us the most good as a learning experience with Seeds Candy. It just, the power of the brand, uh, the unending flow of ever increasing money with no work. Uh, Sounds nice. It, uh, <laughs> it was, and I'm not sure we would have bought the Coca Cola if we hadn't bought the Seas. I think that a life properly lived is a, it's just learn, learn, learn all the time. And I think Berkshire's gained enormously from these investment decisions by learning through a long, long period. Every time you appoint a new person that's never had big capital allocation experience, it's like rolling the dice. And I think we're, we're way better off having done it so long. And, and, but the decisions blend. And the one feature that comes through is the continuous learning. If we had not kept learning, you wouldn't even be here. You'd be alive probably, but not here. <laughs> There's nothing like the pain of being in a lousy business to make you appreciate a good one. <laughs> well, there's nothing like getting into a really good one that's a very pleasant experience and it's a learning experience. I have a friend who says, the first rule of fishing is to fish where the fish are. And the second rule of fishing is to never forget the first rule. And, and we've gotten good at fishing where the fish are. Yeah, that's only metaphorically. I went, many to, I went to fish with Charlie there, one there time. There are too we many other get... boats in the damn water, but, <laughs> but the fish are still there. <laughs> Then you seem to change your view about technology when you invested in IBM, and again when you recently invested in Apple. But then on Friday, you said IBM had not met your expectations and sold a third of our stake. Do you view IBM and Apple differently? Well, I do view them differently, but you know, obviously, when I bought the IBM, started buying it six years ago, I thought it would do better in the six years that have elapsed than uh, it has. And uh, Apple, I, I regard them as being quite different business. I, I think Apple was much more of a consumer products business in terms of the, in, in, in terms of sort of analyzing uh, moats around it and consumer behavior and all that sort of thing. It's obviously a, a, a product with all kinds of tech built into it. But in terms of laying out what their prospective customers will do in the future as opposed to, say, on IBM's customers. It's, it's a different sort of analysis. That doesn't mean it's correct. And we'll find out over time. But th they are two different types of decisions. And, and, and uh, I was wrong on the first one. And we'll find out whether I'm right or wrong on, this, on the second. But I, don't, I do not regard them as uh, apples and apples. And I don't quite regard them as apples and oranges. But they're... <laughs> It's somewhat in between on that. Charlie? Well, we avoided the tech stocks because we felt we had no advantage there, and other people did. And I think that's a good idea not to play where the other people are better. But you know, if you ask me in retrospect what was our worst mistake in the tech field, I think we were smart enough to figure out Google. Those ads worked so much better in the early days than anything else. So I would say that, that we failed you there. 
and we were smart enough to do it and didn't do it. We do that all the time, too. Yeah. We were their customer very early on with, with Geico, for example, and we saw, I, I don't, these figures are way out of date, but I, as I remember, you know, we were paying them 10 or $11 a click or something like that, and anytime you're paying somebody 10 or 11 bucks every time somebody just punches a little thing where you've got no cost at all, uh, you know, that, that's a good business unless somebody's going to take it away from you. And uh, so we were close up uh, seeing the impact of that. And incidentally, if any of you don't have anything to do in your hotel rooms tonight, just, just keep punching progressive or something. And you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> don't really do that. <laughs> the thought just happened across my mind. <laughs> but, you know, that is, you know, you've never seen a business, almost never seen a business like it where, and, and I think for LASIK surgery and things like that, I, I think the figures were, you know, 60 or 70 bucks a click with no incremental, no cost. So, and I knew the guys, I mean, they actually designed their prospectus. They came to see me and they, a little bit after the original one, when they went public, a little bit after Berkshire even. And so I, I had plenty of ways to ask questions or anything of the sort and educate myself, but, but I blew it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we blew, we blew Walmart, too. When, yeah. it, when it was a total cinch, we were smart enough to figure that out, and we didn't. Yeah. Yeah, figuring out execution is what counts. So, <laughs> to, You've said smartphones are too smart for you. You don't have a computer at your desk. And you've only tweeted nine times in the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> It was either that or going to a monastery. <laughs> Despite this, you've recently been investing, looking, and talking more about tech companies. My question to you, and also to Charlie to comment, is what turned you from the Oracle of Omaha to the tech maven of Omaha? <laughs> well, I, I don't think I would, uh, I don't think I've talked that much about tech companies, but the truth is we made a large investment in IBM, I made a large investment in IBM, and which has not turned out that well. We haven't lost money, uh, but in terms of the bull market we've been in, it's been a significant laggard. Uh, and then uh, fairly recently, we, we took a large position in Apple, which I do regard as more of a consumer goods company in terms of certain economic characteristics, although that it, you know, it has a huge tech component in terms of what that product can do or what other people might come along to do to leapfrog it in some way. But I, I, uh, I, think, I'll, I think I'll end up being, no guarantees, but I think I'll end up being one for two instead of 0 for two, but we'll find out. Charlie, I, I, I make no pretense whatsoever of of being on the intellectual level of some 15-year-old that's got an interest in tech. I think I may know, have some insights into consumer behavior. I certainly uh, can get a lot of information on consumer be behavior and then try to draw inferences about what that means about what consumer behavior is likely to be in the future. Uh, but we will find with the, one, the other thing I'll guarantee is I'll make some mistakes on marketable securities, and I've made them in other areas than, uh, than tech. Uh, so it, you, you'll not bat a thousand, you know, no matter what industries you, you, stick, you, you try to stick with. I know insurance pretty well, but I think we probably lost money on an insurance stock perhaps, you know, once or twice over the years. So it, it, uh, you don't bat a thousand. But I have gained no real knowledge about tech in the last, well, since I was born, actually. <laughs> Charlie? I think it's a very good sign that you bought the Apple. It shows either one of two things, either you've gone crazy or you're learning. <laughs> I, prefer the, I prefer the learning explanation. Well, so do I, actually. <laughs> one of the best investments Brookshire ever made was in C's Candy in 1972. They ended up paying 25 million for C's Candy and 
Warren Buffett talks about how they thought they were overpaying because they were used to buying cigar butt really cheap companies that were trading far below tangible book value, something like 25 to 50 percent tangible book value or, or for their working capital is how what they were looking for. For C's Candy, they had to pay up something like three times the tangible book value. And that's how they got to 25 million. But the earnings yield is roughly about 8% because the earnings was 4 million before tax and after tax it was 2. So it's roughly 8% 8 earnings yield, after tax earnings yield. Uh, the PE down below we see it's about 12. This is the perfect example of the strategy that they started doing after C's Candy, buying high earnings yield, 8, 9, 10, and then making sure that the company was so good that they, they were generating lots of cash and they would notice that because they would have cash on the balance sheet and low debt. So they initially paid $25 million to buy all of C's Candy, and to date they've taken in over $1.35 billion dollars in aggregate profits that's not calculating the value of the business now that's just the pure cash flow from C's candies Berkshire and Warren Buffett started buying Apple in 2016 and today the stock is worth over two hundred and twenty dollars that's almost one thousand percent or 10x but amazingly when you look back at the financials, the fundamentals, you'll notice a pattern was very similar to C's Candy and I'm going to show you here on this chart. So on TradingView you can look at something, an indicator called earnings yield and if we look back in 2016 the earnings yield was as high as 10, almost 11 percent so that would make this an attractive value investment just like C's candy back in 1972 now they eventually started adding more positions I believe they had something like eight nine million shares initially and they ended up with 80 90 million and they made an, another big purchase back in 2018 and again this was an eight percent earnings yield even though the stock was at a higher price from 20 something to 40 something because Apple's earnings kept growing the earnings yield reflected that the higher price but also higher earnings made it a still an 8% earnings yield it had gone up to 53 and then dropped and that was the opportunity to buy more shares so earnings yield very useful to start sniffing out good purchasing opportunities in in companies with strong brands like the ones Warren Buffett looks for. So now that Warren Buffett is selling a half of his stake, taking half of his profits, if we look at the same indicator, earnings yield, earnings yield right now is only 3%. So now is a great time for Warren Buffett to take profits. Remember, he was buying in the 20s and 40s. Now it's at 220. If he takes some profits, he just gets a bunch of cash. He reduces his risk. And essentially, he gets whatever he has left is now just free, free stock or all profit.